quite noisy right now. I think it's okay. I'm ready. One, two, three, one, two, three. We continue interviews here at ITF 2024. We want to also understand what IMEC is doing in the automotive sector. I'm here with Joris van Kampen. Joris, thank you very much for talking to me for a couple of minutes. What is IMEC doing in automotive today? Well, maybe I can comment from the optical interconnect side of the silicon photonic side. Um, of course, we are very active in ladder, right? We have a dedicated team working on, on ladder and we are kind of leveraging the work we've done for Datacom, optical interconnect applications in the space of ladder, uh, with our baseline silicon photonics platform, but also with uh, integrated light sources using flip chip and transfer printing. Indeed, FNCW LiDAR is basically a coherent transceiver for a different application. What is the different part? How are we bringing this FNCW LiDAR into automotive? Well, I think uh, a lot of the challenge is still uh, in uh, how you get the light in and out of the chip, right? Uh, because of course every every dB, uh, every photon counts in these very low light uh, kind of applications. So that's definitely an area where we're adding more uh, more innovation. Uh, and of course the laser integration doing it cost, cost effectively, uh, reliably, that still remains to be proven as well. And of course we are talking about a very vibrant ecosystem. Yeah. So how do you do the reliability of this integrated photonics in automotive? Yeah, that, that's something that we uh, still need to kind of uh, do some more workarounds. So we started our initial reliability testing, uh, but indeed the automotive specs are very demanding and that's uh, definitely going to be a, a, a focus area for us going forward. If we want our future cars to make intelligent decisions and ensure the safety of all road travelers, we need to make sure they possess a high-precision, real-time 3D image of their surroundings. For that purpose, it's essential to complement existing technologies, such as radar and cameras, with LiDAR. Compact, robust, and affordable LiDAR systems are key to next-gen ADAS, autonomous driving, and many other groundbreaking applications. The ideal solution is to integrate all the LiDAR components on one silicon chip, an ambitious concept for which IMEC is developing the enabling technologies and photonic electronic building blocks. From an integrated, custom-designed 3.5 laser source to an optical phased array with automatic calibration, and antennas to accomplish the beam steering through controlled phased modulation, without any moving parts. A novel 2D detector array suitable for coherent detection, and on-chip electronics for calibration and signal conditioning, detection, and processing. The goal is to enable our partners to build a cost-efficient system that combines a small form factor with low power consumption, high angular resolution, and a range of up to 300 meters. Apart from new system architectures, IMEC leverages its 15 plus years of experience in silicon photonics and new material platforms to enable these innovative components, especially the integration of silicon nitride for the waveguides and antennas, which allows for low loss and high power handling, all while ensuring compatibility with standard semiconductor manufacturing flows. So being a, a very well-known manufacturing platform for silicon photonics, what I'm seeing at this ITF is all about integration. Mm -hmm. Heterogeneous integration, 2.5D all the way to chiplets. Right. How does LiDAR and automotive play a role into this higher level integration that IMEC is targeting? Yeah, it's a good question. I think these, these FMCW engines likely will be consisting of different chiplets. Um, depends a bit on the architecture we're going to use, right? But for sure, I would say, yeah, we are integrating, for instance, the flip chip, the 3.5 chip. Chiplets, if you want to call it as such, with a select one chiplet that will be an electrical, electrical IC as well that needs to be flip chipped on top of that that system. So yeah, we are definitely leveraging our uh, more advanced packaging technology for uh, for the automotive space as well. Jerry's what I also have seen during this ITF is that ADAS is going to require a lot of new cameras, new detectors, mm -hmm. short wave infrared seems to be a very interesting band, and there IME has expertise for many years. Right, right. No, that's definitely an area. I'm, I'm not that familiar with that area. That's uh, there's a different teams working on that, but it's definitely a very strong point of IMEC as well. And I would say, in general, extending the, the wavelength range uh, by deploying uh, integrated photonics platforms, that's a very core strength of IMEC. And we're definitely looking at uh, other wavelength regions as well, especially in the case of automotive. A lot of interconnects also around the 9 or, uh, 980 nanometer wavelength range. So that's, that's definitely also an area for future development for, uh, for Margaret. Working around the exhibition, this is a fantastic networking event. I met many decision makers from different automotive OEMs. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to mention which automotive OEMs. What kind of things can you do with them? How can, who can you collaborate with automotive OEMs who are not experts in optics and photonics? 
Right. I would say that it's still a bit in discovery mode, but I would argue if you can build, let's say, a differentiated prototype that allows them to get a feeling for what the technology can do, and of course also discover perhaps some pain points, look at the supply chain, where can this technology go from a reliability point of view, from a cost point of view, I think that's definitely an area where we can bring a lot of value. What's your preferred future for FNCW LiDAR in automotive? If we had this interview again, Joris, in four years, what things would you like to tell me? Yeah, I would, I would say that we uh, hope to see that we have ma mastered all the integration challenges towards the very demanding specifications in terms of cost, in terms of reliability, because if you manage that, that, that would, I think, be um, a game changer, not only for automotive, but for many application fields. Are. I really hope we can show you some, uh, some more data around. Uh, indeed, it, it looks like that the uh, FNCW LiDAR today could perhaps have a price mismatch with what automotive wants to pay. But I saw a lot of robotics activity in that room. Do you see robotics as an early adopter for FNCW LiDAR? Uh, I would say the automotive, again, I don't have the best view on that, but I would say the automotive is a very strong uh, pool that we see. Um, I would argue that also the leverage from other application fields, like I was mentioning optical interconnects, AI, for sure that brings a lot of uh, capital in the field for deployment, and some of these developments can hopefully be shared between automotive and, uh, and AI space. Uh, so that, that, that would make a perfect world. Joris, congratulations on not only this fantastic event, but on what you have achieved on the last 20 years since I know you on this career of Silicon Photonics. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And let's enjoy ITF. Let's meet now the people doing OCT on chip.